It was in the trenches of World War I that the seeds of the Third Reich were sown. After fighting a hard and unrelenting war over four years, disillusioned German soldiers would return home to a country humiliated in defeat. It was the new era of the Weimar Republic. Germany was sliding towards financial ruin, where it would cost four billion marks to buy just one dollar. Under these conditions, only the super-rich were able to profit. The middle classes would lose all their savings, and the working classes would not be able to afford to eat. The despair and resentment that followed would change the course of world history forever. The spark that would ignite the firestorm of the Third Reich was one insignificant Austrian private in the German army, Adolf Hitler. Like many others, he could not stand the bitter taste of defeat, and his mind turned towards entering politics. Hitler returned to his adopted home of Munich in November 1918 to find a city in turmoil. In Munich, as in other cities in the defeated Germany, Returning soldiers were forming revolutionary groups and bitter street fighting would regularly erupt. The country had been shamed by the conditions set by the Treaty of Versailles. Under the terms of the Treaty of Versailles, the German Republic lost a number of territories. It lost all Germany's overseas colonies. Uh, to the west, it lost the provinces of Alsace and Lorraine to France and the German Rhineland was demilitarized, which is to say no troops could be stationed in it as a protection to the French. To the south, uh, Germany lost the Sudetenland to the new Republic of Czechoslovakia, and to the east, uh, in the most extraordinary of the stipulations of the Treaty of Versailles, uh, the new Republic of Poland uh, was given a corridor along the line of the River Vistula through to the port of Danzig at the sea. And this Vistula corridor separated East Prussia from the rest of Germany. The German army was reduced to 100,000 men, long service soldiers only, with no tanks, no aircraft, and no general staff structure. The German navy was reduced to six obsolete battleships with a provision of no more ships of more than 10,000 tons, uh, which was just about enough for coastal defence. And with the absence of reserves, this was meant to make it impossible for the Germans ever to threaten the peace of Europe again. While still in the army, Hitler was asked to spy on a small group of people who called themselves the German Workers' Party. Their right-wing views appealed to the disillusioned private. He decided to join the party. He later said, It was the most decisive resolve of my life. From here, there could be no turning back. Almost immediately, he took an active role in the party, and by July 1921, he was their leader. Its support was growing steadily, and it was renamed the National Socialist German Workers' Party or Nazis for short. The symbol for the party was chosen by Hitler himself. The swastika was an ancient symbol that Hitler had redesigned for his own needs. He revealed, a symbol it really is. In red we see the social idea of the movement, in white the nationalist idea, and in the swastika the mission of the struggle of the Aryan man. It was this time that the eventual hierarchy of the party was assembling. The faithful Rudolf Hess, always at Hitler's side, Hermann Goering, a swaggering wartime aviator who had received Germany's highest award for valor, and Ernst Röhm, a serving army officer. Röhm would lead the newly formed Sturmabteilung, or SA. 
Their purpose was to protect the Nazi rallies of the time. But they soon became a more sinister paramilitary force on the streets of Germany. The brown shirts, as they were known, disrupted opponents' meetings and used violence against the left and the Jews. Hitler approved of a culture of fear, as the next few years were to prove. In September 1923, 200,000 people attended a rally in the ancient city of Nuremberg. Hyperinflation was tearing the country apart, and there were rumors of an attempted coup by the communists. On the 8th of September, 1923, the Nazis attempted a putsch in Bavaria. This was quickly put down by the regular army. Goering was severely wounded in the fighting that followed, and 16 of the marchers were killed. Hitler was later arrested and was sentenced to five years in Landsberg jail. He only spent nine months there and was able to write his book, Mein Kampf, which was to become a bestseller. On Hitler's release from Landsberg, Field Marshal von Hindenburg was now president, and the country was starting to rebuild slowly. The next few years saw a slow growth in the party's fortunes, and in 1928, they managed to win 12 of the 491 seats in the Reichstag. The turning point for the Nazis was the Wall Street crash in 1929. It led to widespread poverty and unemployment in Germany. This fueled the membership of the party, as the Nazis promised more jobs and economic stability. It was the opportunity that Hitler had been waiting for. In 1931 saw Ernst Röhm expanding the role of the SA, who by this time could put on a show of over a hundred thousand uniformed members, much to the dismay of the political authorities. By 1932, and despite a ban on the wearing of political uniforms, the SA's strength was up to 400,000. However, as they increased in strength, they also became a problem for Hitler. 